Hi, this is Jeff with the Halcyon Masters, and welcome to the Heroic Ties series. Vainglory's hero lore span from the funny and whimsical, like the Summer Party skin collection, to backstories that are more tragic and deep. Quite literally, one of the deepest stories is that of Rona and Fortress, and we'll explain why in just a few minutes. Rona sits at a fire across from an old druid. His people are the keeper of knowledge, mathematics, and history of the land that Rona's people now inhabit. The reason for Rona's visit is the increasingly frequent earth tremors, and she knows that he has a story for everything. The druid corrected Rona by saying that there is a truth for everything and began to explain why the earth was shaking. Now bear with me, because here's where it gets a little complicated. Beneath Rona and the druid is a sleeping giant elder named Gudmund. What do you mean? He's the son of Gunnar the Great Oak and brother of Gymir. These three are the ultimate dysfunctional family, as the brothers are bitter rivals and war between them was so violent that nothing could live among the ruins. Their mother sang a song to make them fall asleep and buried them deep underground on opposite sides of the world. Gunnar transformed herself into a great oak tree and held her sons captive with her roots. This gives new meaning to family tree and getting rooted. Silly tree. According to legend, the breath of these sleeping giants is where the Halcyon Wells now lie. Where is the ancient power breath? Take me to it! The druid tells Rona the nearest well is at the center of a temple, and it's guarded by a great fortress. It's protected so all humankind will not kill itself with the power of the Halcyon. She is to learn the story well so when he is gone, she can pass the story on to the next generation. Rona interrupted the druid, asking, why at 800 years old he thinks he's going to travel to the other side of the world to stop the earthquakes. If it really is the giant that's causing all this trouble, she'll just climb down the well and bury her axe in his eye. The druid laughs and tells her that he will not be alone for this journey, and this is something that you cannot fight but something you must run from. Just then, the earth shakes again, and in the distance, the howl of a great wolf can be heard. The temple that Fortress protects is under attack not from the outside, but from the well at which the temple was built around. After the first earthquake, the alpha dog inspected the innermost circle of the ancient temple. He could smell the toxic fumes flowing from the well, Is that bacon? and the ice that covered the ground began to melt. With each earthquake, the ice melted more, turning the floor into mud, and the structure of the temple itself began to crumble. The pack of wolves could sense something was terribly wrong, and then the vines appeared. They shot out in every direction, crushing the temple's stone pillars. The pack tried to shred the vines, but they just grew back faster. To make matters worse, frozen eggs ascended to the surface of the mud and hatched vicious little creatures. The wolves went to battle, but after each wave, the new birth just grew larger until they were the size of the wolves themselves. The final weapon of the churn was the stinging insects and blood-sucking mosquitoes that attacked the temple's guardians. These bushes are full of fleas. Poison, beaten, swallowed, outnumbered, and worst of all, itchy, Fortress called to his pack to retreat. Outside the great temple, Fortress turned his snout to the air and called out for the old druid. I have need for you. Fortress and his pack pulled the old druid by sled to the great oak tree. While massive, it appeared to be just that, a tree. The druid grabbed a handful of the tree's acorns and ate one for himself and tossed a second to Fortress. Now kids, this is the part of the lesson where you do not want to eat random nuts, mushrooms, berries, or what look like chocolate nuggets while in the woods. As a minute later, the druid and Fortress were sick with pain and they started to hallucinate. A voice spoke to them from the great tree, asking why they've traveled so far from home. The druid responded by asking for passage to the other side of the world and the tree agreed to grant passage for his companions. However, the druid must stay with her as she missed the companionship of a son. Fortress protested, but the druid embraced his old friend, saying that this was the only way. More branches grabbed the druid and he was pulled into the great tree. The mother's face turned into a wide hollow and Fortress moved closer into the spiral staircase within. Not far behind Fortress and the druid was Rona. For the first time, she had blatantly disobeyed the druid's orders. Instead of staying with her people, she tracked the old man through the snow. Rona was not alone on this journey, as white furry monsters flew up from the snowdrifts. One, two, then ten more of the demon rabbits attacked her. Rona grabbed her axes and went to battle. She whirled, hacked, slashed, and then, as soon as the fighting started, she ended it. 
Around her, the snow was covered in blood, but now she had dinner and a treat for the pack of hungry dire wolves that she was tracking, and their fur just might make a good outfit. Rona arrived at the Great Tree about an hour after Fortress entered the hollow. As Rona came closer to the massive trunk, she could see her teacher, mentor, and friend wrapped in the tree's branches. She pulled out her axes to try to free him, but the branches just regrew. Saddened by the loss of her friend, she whispered, North is always forward, and explored the hollow in the tree. She started down the stairs and then slipped, butt bumping down in an unknown number of stairs. Oh, it's so hot out here. That was not the worst part, because as far down as Rona fell, and I told you this story was deep, she had to walk up the same number of steps. At the end, she climbed out of another great tree in the middle of a jungle, and waiting for her there was Fortress, who said, the druid had hoped you would follow. Rona asked the dog who he was, in which he responded, I am the Fortress. The druid's story now made sense to Rona, and after a short pause, Fortress said to Rona, Come with me, there is fighting to be done. We thank you for watching this episode of Heroic Ties. I ask if you enjoyed this video to please take a second and press the like button. And be sure to subscribe so you'll be the first to know when we release a new video. Likes and subscriptions go a long way to helping us out. Oh, really quick, a special thanks to all the artists and writers at SEMC for the awesome work they do. I've put a link to the original lore in the description below, so be sure to check it out. And until next time, we'll see you on the Halcyon Fold.